Good day, best surgeons. Now is the day for episode 9. We have learned more than half of the procedures. All steps of the posterior approach are 15. Let's go and hurry up today's topic. We can finish the last steps of EBES within two weeks. Then you can do best better than now. We can say the conclusion first. Contralateral laminectomy must be resected about 2 mm above from the ventral margin of the contralateral lamina. On the ipsilateral side, we are looking down straight, so that laminectomy can be done along the high ridge. On the contralateral side, we are reaching obliquely about 40 to 60 degrees. So, when we are landing on the contralateral high ridge and cut it, half of the contralateral lamina can be sacrificed and consequently lamina fracture might happen. Contralateral laminectomy must be done along the line, 2 mm above from the ventral margin of the lamina. The accessing angle of ipsilateral laminectomy is quietly different from that of contralateral laminectomy. Contralateral laminectomy on the high ridge means half of the lamina can be resected. Be careful of too much resection of the contralateral lamina. Medial bony surface of the lamina should be exposed well. Only resecting along the 2 mm above line is enough to expose the SAP tip on the contralateral side. Please be careful not to resect the contralateral laminal too much. Let me summarize the step once more. Contralateral laminectomy of 2 mm depth is enough. Two millimeters above from the ventral margin of the contralateral lamina. SAP tip can be exposed just after 2 mm resection of the contralateral upper lamina. When we need contralateral foraminal decompression, then one more 2 mm resection of proximal sublaminar area can show you the exiting route. When you want to decompress contralateral foramen, don't try to resect too much lamina. Only resection of proximal sublaminar area can show the way to the foramen. And you can see the exiting route.